I'm going to do some mild weathering on um, Tony's 4F that you saw being painted. And I also have a Backman V2, this is in its factory finish, which Tony has done some modifications to. And we're going to tone down the overscale lining on the front end where they, they got the bright bits there. And just gently tone it down so it looks like it's been in traffic for a day or two. Now I've mixed up Initially, to put across the top where you get soot and ash falling, it's just a mix of Umbral Matte Black number 33 and Matte Dark Grey number 67. Just mix in roughly equal proportions. Of course you can vary it depending on how you feel the engine should look. And later on, I, as I move down the engine, it's going to pick up more rust from the brake blocks on the track. So I'll be adding in a brown and I generally use a matte brick red, number 70, which gives a, a rusty sort of oily finish to the thing. I'll just shift those off there. The mix is fairly thin. I've used two parts of thinners to half a mustard spoon of each colour. So it's, it's basically a two to one mix. But as I spray, I'm going to use uh, a lot of air and very little paint. Just put a start of the buffer beam, which is generally pretty filthy, was never cleaned. And just a gentle drift over the top. On a black engine, you don't actually see this a great deal. It just mats the whole thing down a bit. And come along the side. I'm holding the spray further away to get a wider cone of paint. Now you can just see the, the numbering toning down there. And that's all you need really. It's an engine that's been out of the works for maybe a week or so. And of course, four S were never cleaned. And just do the same with the front number plate. Now the buffer beam again. It also tones down the shininess on the coupling. Just get plenty on the dome, which caught most of the smoke. And again, the front of the cab. Just to dirt up the cab windows. Very, very likely. You can do the inside of the cab if it's detailed sufficiently, especially the cab floor. And we'll go for the tender now. Just a gentle spray over. Just tone down the emblem there. I'm not doing this because I'm going to change the colour for there. And likewise in there, where you get a lot of rust. It's extremely subtle this. Any overweathering is going to destroy your model. inside the coal space, trying to keep it off the coal is put in. The fire irons which are extremely rusty, you do that with a brush later on, just pick out the, the rust on there. And now I come to the V2, where you'll see the effect far more. Let's just get rid of this big blow to get any dust off it. Plastic models attract dust more than metal ones because of static. Just gently take that front end there.
you just see the change of colour and the safety valves would never be bright. The balance is rarely cleaned anyway so we can do a bit more on that. And that's the one side done pretty well. And we just repeat for this side. And that's it. All toned down as if it had been a working locomotive. And the tender again. And that's as far as we're going with the, uh, the black and the grey mix. And just hold it without smudging everything. What I'm doing now is adding a bit of brown to the mix. On the engine where we're going to put it is just on the, the footsteps. In the sandbox at the front there, just to replicate the, the brake dust coming off the wheels. Maybe just to sweep along the platform there. And on the tender, you get a lot of water sloshing around in this area which would lead to rust which is it's an ideal place to, to to dry brush weathering in there but we can just put a, a gentle drift of a brownie colour just to show it's never cleaned always neglected and perhaps a bit on the platform there but also on the frames And we're not talking about anything particularly sophisticated here. And again on the engine, on the front frames here. On the footsteps. And on the rear frame as well. If you've got any expanse of firebox showing underneath an ash pan, you'd need to increase the amount of rust you put in because that would just be bright red with rust as the engine was older. And finally the tender treated the same way as the 4F tender except here we've got the wheels on which uh, you're going to have to done separately. If you can make them spin with the air, it's a much quicker job. So here we've got to turn each one. Right, that's so then a drift of the frames. That is your weathered, well, gently weathered engine.